Hi drummers, hope you're well. Right, quick talk through for you here of the song The Weight. Uh, this is the version of the song that appears in Trinity Rock and Pop Drums Grade 1. Uh, it's by the band. It's a really nice song, man. Really cool, I think. Really unusual uh, one. A lot of the tunes at Grade 1 are like straight ahead, sort of pop rock sort of tunes. This one's got a bit more of a laid back ballad feel. Really classic tune and a really, yeah, really nice one that they've got in the mix, man. Uh, let's have a little look at it. Now, from the start here. We've got a whole lot of not playing at the beginning. On the first bar there, we've got the big black rectangle. That's hanging down from the line, right? So that is a one bar rest, a four beat rest. One, two, three, four. When you when you look at the second bar, we've got this, the other little long rest that we see often at grade one and grade two, which is also a black rectangle, but that's like on the line below it, right? So it's resting on the line below. That's just a two beat rest. So one, two. The way I remember the difference is um, the, the one that's hanging down from the line, it hangs around for longer, right? It's cheesy, but that's how I always remembered it. Remembered it. So it's hanging down uh, from the line. It hangs around for longer. So the first one is a whole bar. One, two, three, four. Then you've got one, two for the black rectangle that's resting on the line below. And then you've got a drum fill that goes three, four ands. Hopefully by this point, looking at your grade one, you're up on your quarter notes, your eighth notes and your 16th notes or your crotchets, quavers and semi-quavers. This is a quarter note on beat three, which happens to be on the high tom. And then two eighth notes, which happens to be on the floor tom. So three, four and. So I'm going to count here from the beginning where the music starts, that is uh, through the first two bars. So one, two, three, four, all rested. Then one, two, three, four and. You with me so far? One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. As we can see there, the last bar of that first line is a bar of groove, straight ahead, uh, straight eights feel, one and two and three and four and, and again, hopefully by this point, and you, if you're working on your grade one, you've learned that sort of beat and you're up to speed on that. Um, and then that's got a crash symbol on the first beat of the bar. So one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. You getting that? All right, cool. So I'm going to play the whole first line. This is from when the music starts. Obviously, you've got the count in, which goes before, which will be one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Now the music starts. One, two, three, four. One, two, drums. Three, four, and three, and four. That's our first line. Now the verse comes in, and the groove goes like this. Okay, a little two bar phrase there. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four, and. So first bar of the two is pretty straightforward, regular straight eights feel, basic rock beat type of thing. When you get to the second bar, it's a bit more busy. The kick and snare is one, two, three, and four, and. Now again, sort of hopefully by this point, depends on what you've been doing in your lessons and in your learning, but hopefully by this point, for grade, if you're attempting this grade one book, you'd be reasonably fluent with just playing some different basic bass drum variations. If you're not, what I'd really suggest, or even if you sort of are, what I'd really suggest doing is having a look at my little video where we do that. We present some basic bass drum variations against the straight eights feel uh, groove on the hi-hat. Have a little play along with those. Make sure you're up to speed uh, on that kind of stuff, man. That's a little two-bar phrase. Now, after that, through the rest of this line and most of the next line as well, it's cont sim. That means continue similar. So you carry on playing a groove in that vein, basically. Every diagonal slash is one crotchet beat or one quarter note of keep going, of play that groove. You can make some small changes if you want to. You can vary the groove slightly, but you certainly don't need to do anything too flashy here. You certainly don't go into a drum solo or start playing around the kit. You stay on the hi-hat, the snare and the kick. Yeah, the odd change here or there might be nice, but especially at first, man, I would say pretty much stick to that two bar phrase, right? So from the start of the verse, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. So that was the first two bars. Bars four and five, then the same again, where it says cont sim. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. Now we're on to bars eight and nine. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, and four, and. 
And now the last two bars of the verse. Uh, so 10 and 11. One, two, three, four. One, two. Now this is uh, where you hit a drum fill. We'll get to that in a sec, man. So that's the main idea through the verse. Keeping going with that straight eights feel. I would say broadly base it around that two bar musical phrase of one, two, three, four. That's the first bar. One, two, three, and four. And that's the second bar. Now, what sort of variations might you do once you're comfortable with that? Well, just subtle things, right? I'll give you some examples. Maybe you'd go two, three, and four. One, and two, three, and four. And maybe you'd go two, three, and four. One, and two, and three, and four, and one. So again, just based around that basic sort of bass drum variations thing, along with a straight eights feel on the hi-hat. I'd have a little noodle around with that, a little play around with that. But just to be super clear, in the first instance, I really, and, and like in the sessions that I run uh, teaching face-to-face -face and on Zoom as well, we really don't worry about the variations hugely at first. We just play it as a straight repeat of the two-bar phrase. Uh, so feel free to do that. Now, when we get to the drum fill, this drum fill is two beats long. Like where the word fill is written is quite significant. It's written above the third beat of the bar, isn't it? The third slash in that bar. So you've got two crotchet beats here, two quarter notes worth of do a fill. Now, again, I'll link to this in the, in the description. I've got a whole uh, set of videos about making your own drum fills. And um, the, the method I'd really recommend using here is that really simple sort of grade one method where you just change up the rhythm or the note values that you're playing and then just move that around the kit. And what I mean by that is, for every beat that you're playing a drum fill on, and in, say that we were playing a whole bar's worth of drum fill, um, say that you played, uh, you, on each beat, you selected either a quarter note, eighth notes, or sixteenth notes, or maybe even the other two little rhythm phrases that we see at grade one, one E and, and one ander. Like on each beat, just choose one of those, basically. Let's do a really simple version. Say that we're doing a one bar fill. Let's go quarter note, quarter note, eighth notes, sixteenth notes. So one, two, three, and four E and. That's an example of a one bar fill, right? One, two, three, and four E and. Three and four. Just random, that's a random example. I'm not saying do that, I'm just saying that's that's an example. Do you see what I'm doing? On each beat, I'm just choosing one of the note values and then I'm just playing it. And then in the first instance, we tend to go beat one, beat two, beat three, beat four over a whole bar just to sort of keep track. But then once we get the feel for it, we can change it up a little bit. Anyway, I've got a whole series of videos about that, which I'll link to below. Don't want to get too sidetracked with that here. But we're going to use broadly that approach here when we get to the two beat long drum fill. And this is in bar 11, we're going to use that. And I'm just going to give you an example here. Please don't copy mine. Use this method to come up with your own fill. But I'm going to give you an example. So we need to cover two beats. Let's go eighth notes on beat three, the first beat of drum fill, and then let's go 16th notes, or semi quavers, on beat four. So I'm gonna play it here as, you got it? So three and four E and a. Pretty simple example. Such a great way to come up with simple drum fills, man. But on each beat that you need to fill, pick a type of note, pick a note value, and play it. How you orchestrate it, it's kind of up to you. Just keep a simple orchestration at first. So using that, bar 11 now, just before the chorus is gonna go like this. One and two and three and four. You got it? Cool, man. But, but, bo, 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 bo. that was my example, but come up with your own. You might go, or you might just play two crotches. Or you might play one E and two E and. Or you might play one and two and. Whatever, man, it's up to you. But there's two full beats for you to fill there. One good idea, I think, is when you're, especially at like maybe grade one, sort of close to starting out on the drums, have, like, write your drum fill ahead of time. Don't just wing it. You you can wing it, but then obviously, that especially when you've not been playing that long, that, that can come unstuck in the heat of the moment. Good idea to have a plan, I would say, at this point. Cool, that's that. And then the chorus comes in, and it sounds like this. Okay, it's got a bit of stuff going on here. So people 
are often, in my experience of teaching this one, working with people learning this, uh, and I can relate to this actually from when I started as well, are often quite thrown off by that crash symbol at the start. What this groove basically is, is a repeat of this one bar groove. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. So if you look at bar 13, funnily enough, first, that gives you the basic groove that the whole thing is based around. So it's still a straight eights feel. Rather than hitting the snare drum on the two and the four, like we're used to in a basic rock beat, right? Here we're going to hit the snare drum on all four beats in the bar. So you could spend a bit of time just getting that going first. Eighth notes here, quarter notes here. One, two, three, four. A bass drum or a kick will come in on just one occasion, and that's on the end of beat three. Getting that? So even though this is quite a sort of slow, soulful ballad, in fact, that has quite a lot in common with a Motown or soul drum beat. So that sort of style of playing, I think it's kind of what it's referring to a little bit. So that's the basic idea. One, two, three, and four. Now the crash symbol that, again, understandably people get often quite confused by at first. Now all that is is a crash symbol like the capital letter at the start of a sentence, just marking the very beginning of the, of the chorus, right? Just kind of marking the beginning of a new section like so often it does. So all that's happening is the very first time, instead of going... like it does on the subsequent repeats of that bar. Um, we're just, instead of a snare drum with a left stick and hi-hat, we're actually just playing a right stick on the crash, or probably a right stick on the crash, and a bass drum together. So the first bar goes... So can you see bar 12 is actually the same as the bars that come afterwards. It's just that the first hit has been replaced with... Like I say, it's what drummers do so, so often when they're going to a new section, they hit a crash on the first beat and then pick up into the groove that they're going to play. And the, the crash at the start just announces the beginning of the new section. I'm going to play here. I'm going to wind it back. I'm going to play from bar 11. From 11, 2, and 3, and 4, and... And do your drum fill, whatever it is. Now crash. And then the next repeat, just in case you don't know at this point, the little thing there that looks like a kind of percent mark is repeat the previous bar. So when you play bar, bar 13, one, two, three, and four, then that little marking means do that again, repeat it. Okay, we're now into bar 15, 12, 13, yeah, bar 15, this just goes... There's two eighth notes, right? One and. So a snare drum on beat one and a crash and a kick on the and of beat one. One and. That's all there is to it there, man. That's all there is to it. So it's funny. It's unusual. I get that it's not very instinctive at grade one, but it's nice that they throw these little moments in to get us thinking. What we're doing here is we're playing one and, two, three, four. So we're resting for the whole rest of the bar. One and. Then you've got the big upright squiggly thing, which is a one beat rest or a quarter note rest. You've then got your little black rectangle, which is sitting down on the line. Remember a two beat rest. So that's that bar. One, and two, three, four. You've then got a bar of three, four. Now this, hopefully at this point in your drumming lessons or studies, you've considered time signatures. Uh, I'll put a link to my video about time signatures below. Um, long story short here, top number, tells you how many beats are in each bar, and the bottom number tells you what type of beat is one beat. Is it a quarter note, an eighth note, a sixteenth note, and so on. In both these 
two time signatures we see in this song, uh, we've got 4-4 four, four, and 3-4. So in both cases, the bottom number is 4. So it's all based on quarter notes or crotches. So all we've got to do here in this bar of 3-4 is just count up to 3. We're resting here. Again, it's a one bar rest. So we're just going to rest here for the count of 1, 2, 3 before we then start with the first beat of the last line, okay? I'm now gonna play the whole chorus. Here we go, one, or the whole of that line anyway, starting at 12. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. You got it? The most important thing you can do when you're not playing there is count. Don't not count, man. Don't not count. Say it slow down. Say the numbers. The counting is like your candle in the dark, man. When things get a bit tricky, like here, it gets a bit weird. It gets a bit not instinctive. Well, people like to say sometimes, oh, I just like to feel it. And that's cool, but sometimes you, it doesn't work, right? Sometimes you need to, sit, like, to know where you are. Sometimes you need to be a bit objective about it and say, okay, I'm going to just count my way through this. You get a feel for it over time as you, as you count, as you repeat but really important to count in that bit, I would say. One and two, three, four. One, two, three, then we're into the last line. This is the last line now, starting at 17. Uh, regular straight eights feel for the first bar. Pushed crash on the second bar. One and two. And. That's bar 18, and they refer to that in the notes, right, on the left hand page, the idea of pushing a crash symbol. One and two. And. I've got a video about pushing the crash symbol. I will link to that in the description as well. So when you push, you play on the and. One and two. And. You got it? One and two. And. You then got a two bar drum fill sorry, two beats drum fill that you can use exactly the same method to come up with. Let's play, let's, in fact, let's play something simple here. Let's go one and two and three, four and, right? One and two and three, four and. So I've decided to play uh, a quarter note there on beat three and two eighth notes on beat four. I've played it snare drum and floor tom. You can play whatever you like. And again, to repeat, please don't copy my fills, man. Uh, because the whole point here is kind of to have part of the value of the thing is coming up with your own drum fills. If you copy my fills, it might work in your, it'll sound okay and it'll work in your exam, but you won't have learned the skill. You won't have spent time doing the thing, which is the whole point here, which is like building up your skill, creating drum fills. So check out my video course uh, about that uh, below and just, yeah, spend a bit of time. Please do come up with your own fills here using that simple method. So three, four, and is what I've done. Here comes the first two bars of the last line. Okay, remember that pushed crash on the and of beat two. And now the last uh, three bars. So it's really similar, isn't it? This time we hit a crash on the third bar along there, bar 19. One and two and three and four and one and two and. And then do your own drum fill for two beats using exactly the same method as before. And then we crash on beat one to finish. I quite like to at the end of a song do like two crashes together if you've got them. Uh, not necessarily louder, but just to give a kind of fuller sound right at the end. You don't have to do that. Definitely not that compulsory, just, just a fun thing to do. Okay, I'm going to play the whole song whilst counting and saying where we are uh, all the way through. Here we go. So the count in on the on your backing track will go one, two, three, four. One, two, three. Here comes the guitar. One and two and three and four and one, two drums. Three, four. Okay, now the verse. One. Now the next two bars continue similar. Now bar eight continue similar.
Now bar 10, 3, 4, here comes your fill. Hope that all makes a bit of sense. Have some fun with the drum fills. Please do take the time here to get the value out of like half the point of this is sort of creating your own little fills there tastefully and musically. Please don't think the drum fills have to be anything flashy. Drum fills based of quarter notes, based on quarters, eighths, sixteenths, and one e and and one ander would be absolutely fine here, man. Just please don't suddenly start playing like something really fast and difficult around the kit here. That's not not the point and wouldn't fit the music as well. So I hope that all makes a bit of sense. This video is dedicated, by the way, to the lovely Steve and Evie who requested this one and uh, bought me a coffee. Uh, I really appreciate that so much, man. So this is this is for you, dedicated to you. I hope you're enjoying that. Thanks for watching these videos. I understand they've been watching these videos and learning their uh, grade one together, which makes me feel very happy. That's super cool. And um, hopefully this was useful for you. If you have any questions, give us a shout. Thanks for watching as always. Really, really appreciate it. And please like, share and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I hugely appreciate that. Thanks again to all the amazing people who've done that and all to the uh, as well to all the amazing viewers who've supported this channel by the by buy me buy me a coffee which is a single one-off show of support via my buy me a coffee support page which i'll link to in the description below uh, or by becoming a monthly member if, if you want to um, go a little deeper here with this and support this channel and help it grow but also get um, a load of support in return uh, by becoming a monthly member for 10 pounds a month you get a whole load of t uh, cool stuff including a complimentary zoom session or potentially face to face as and when we can do that uh, again um, you get a whole load of other stuff like members videos i'll write you a customized practice plan which i'll update and change for you as you progress you get a uh, priority request over for future videos coming up um, a whole load of other stuff as well man and more features coming on the member side so thanks a million to all the amazing people who've signed up actually I'll, I'll do a little shout out to videos soon because loads of people have signed up man I need to shout you out and give you the uh, the uh, moment in the sun you deserve so thanks a million for all the people who've done that hugely appreciate it you're supporting this channel and helping it grow and uh, shout out to Steve and Evie thanks a million for watching cheers